All right, welcome everyone and welcome back to Learning with Jelly. Today, we're going to talk about logistic regression in SAS. I highly recommend that you look at the previous video that talks about linear regression in SAS. So that way you have a good foundation on simplistic models, okay? So this lesson is going to be very high level. You can spend a semester or even a year talking about logistic regression, but we're just going to define what the logistic regression model is. The main takeaway here is that you're gonna have a categorical target we're going to talk about some assumptions that need to be intact before you run the model. And then we're going to look at the PROC logistic procedure in SAS to actually run a logistic regression model. So let's get started with the definition. So what exactly is logistic regression? So I'm going to go back to the previous lesson and I'm going to type out what we discussed when we talked about linear regression, right? That linear regression itself is this equation where we have y equal to the coefficient of some x plus the y-intercept. And this was based off of that slope equation y equals mx plus b, right? And this is something that we all have probably seen in math before. Now, Versus this linear regression formula, now for logistic regression, you have the log odds of y or the logit of y equal to beta 1 x 1 plus beta naught, right? So the main difference between linear regression and logistic regression is your response variable. It is your y. In linear regression, you're modeling a direct linear relationship. In logistic regression, you're modeling something called the logit function or the log odds of y. So all of your coefficients will be in terms of log odds, okay? So linear logistic regression is also considered a classification model because of this, okay? Because your categorical target is going to be either binary, yes, no, one, zero, cancer or no cancer, or it's going to have multiple categorical levels such as high, medium, and low. So let's look at this example that we have on our screen. So we see that we have the probability of passing an exam and we have a one and a zero, right? And the probability has to be on a scale of zero to one. And so with that, we have an X variable called hours of studying. So it looks like for this observation here, someone who studied four hours for their exam actually passed the exam because one is denoting pass and zero is denoting a fail, right? So we don't see this straight line relationship that we've seen in linear regression, right? We see something called this sigmoid function because now we're modeling the probabilities, right? So in this case, we can see what is the cutoff in hours of studying or close to it on whether or not someone would more than likely pass their exam, okay? So you're modeling this log odd relationship with this sigmoid function. As I mentioned, we're not gonna go into too much detail, but this is overall what a logistic regression is doing and what it is. Your main question is going to be, what is this observation's probability of actually having an event, okay? So this is logistic regression. So main takeaway here, categorical target, yes, no, pass, fail, disease, no disease, one, zero, high, medium, and low. The main difference between linear regression is now that you're modeling the log odds of Y versus a direct straight line relationship, okay? So let's talk about some assumptions of your data that must be intact before you actually run this model, okay? So as I've already mentioned in the previous slide, you're going to have a categorical Y variable, okay? Your observations are also going to be independent, and it's also good that your observations are complete cases, aka you don't have any missing values across your row. There needs to be little to no multicollinearity amongst your independent variables, meaning your independent variables should not have a strong relationship between them. If they do, use one or the other, okay? 
There should be no influential observations to throw off your coefficients. And there has to be a linear relationship between X and the log odds of Y, okay? So these are some assumptions that have to be intact with your data before actually running the logistic regression model. We're not going to go into every assumption, but please look up these assumptions in more detail before you actually run your model, okay? So let's move on to the next slide. So let's look at what the data is that we're going to be shown today in our actual example. So here we are going to talk about, oops, and let's go back one slide. The Titanic data set, it has a categorical target where zero means someone did not survive and one means that someone did survive. So this is going to be our Y variable. And then we have all of these options that we can choose for for our X variables, okay? So this would be a data set that would be ideal in actually running a logistic regression model. I'm going to link the data set in the description below if you want to practice with this data set and follow along with the code, okay? All right, so let's keep going and let's talk about that assumption of independent or little to no multicollinearity amongst your independent variables. So when we talk about little to multicollinearity, we learned in a previous lesson, and that will be linked below for prop core, where you can look at the correlations between variables. And if two variables are highly correlated, there's no need to use both of those variables in an actual model. So the cutoff value could be an absolute value of 0.7. So if you're looking at these values on the screen here, it's going to be the values that are at the top of every box. These are called your Pearson correlation coefficients. And if the absolute value of any of these numbers is greater than 0.7, you can consider that these variables are highly correlated. Now, this cutoff could change, okay? And there's also something called the variance inflation factor that you also could utilize. So I just gave an example of where we have our fair and we have the number of siblings and spouses. And we see that these two independent variables are pretty much uh, medium correlated at about 0 0.4, okay? So one way to check for multicollinearity is going to be to run this prop core procedure that we learned in a previous lesson. Okay, so let's continue on and let's actually get to the code. So like I said, we're going to use that Titanic data. We're going to be predicting whether or not someone survived the Titanic. This model was ran on complete observations, aka the observations that had any missing data across the row was dropped. And this is a simple model that's only going to be used for academic purposes, OK? So what is the actual code in SAS for you to run the model? Okay? So it's going to be this proc logistic procedure that you see on your screen. The class statement is going to be any categorical variable that you're interested in. Okay. And so in this case, sex and where they embarked the Titanic are all categorical variables that I'm interested in. Then in the model statement, your Y is going to go on the left-hand side and all of your X's are going to go on the right-hand side. So in this case, I'm trying to model the survived variable because that is my categorical variable. And I am using the X predictors of age, embarked, and sex. And as soon as I run this procedure, I get this output, right? Where I have all of the X variables and I have their coefficients, which is underneath the estimate column. And I also have their P values, right? And if it's a really, really small P value compared to your alpha, we know that this variable is significant in determining whether someone would survive the Titanic. So for instance, let's take a look at the sex variable that we just have here. All right, so within this sex variable, if I'm looking at the coefficient here, I see that I have a coefficient, let's back up some, 
coefficient of 1.2379, okay? Keep in mind, because this is a logistic regression, this is denoting the change in log odds of y every time we increment the x by one unit, holding everything else constant, right? So in order to get this from log odds to regular odds, we are going to exponentiate that coefficient, okay? So I run e to the coefficient, and then I get out a conclusion that 3.45 times more likely for a female to survive the Titanic compared to a male, okay? So that is exactly how you would interpret that coefficient. So you wanna do E to the coefficient and you wanna put it in terms of odds or increased likelihood, et cetera, et cetera, okay? All right, so now let's exit out of that and actually hop in SAS Studio because we went over a lot. And I'm gonna show you how to upload the file in SAS Studio. This is also in a previous lesson of how to upload data, but I'm gonna click Files Home and I'm going to hit the up arrow at the top. I'm gonna choose the files and I have saved this file on my desktop called Titanic CSV. I'm going to open that and I'm going to upload it. Once I upload this, it comes down here. I'm going to right click on this or double click on it, better yet. And when I double click on it, I see that I have a proc import, okay? So the proc import is going to tell you, hey, we want to import this data file. It's existing as a CSV is going to come in your work library as dot import and we want to run that procedure okay so i don't want to actually save this as work dot import i want to actually save this as titanic but we can change the name once we run the code okay so only thing i did was double click on the csv and now i'm going to hit run Okay, awesome. And as soon as I run it, it comes with our contents procedure where we can see all of our variable names, the variable types, etc. So I'm actually going to hit onto an actual SAS code and expand my libraries. Underneath the work library, I see that it's called import. I'm actually going to right click and rename this and I'm going to rename this as Titanic. And now when I expand my work library, I see that it's stored as Titanic, okay? I can double click on the data set and I can see that I have all of the information that I was supposed to have in the data dictionary. Okay, so we've already saw the proc contents, but it's always good to look at the proc contents, right? We saw the proc contents because when you do an import, it automatically shows you the proc contents procedure. From there, as I mentioned, you want to check your assumptions. So this is ex an example of checking one assumption, which is multicollinearity. So you can highlight this and you can run the prop core procedure. And here you will have all of the correlation values for your X predictors. So if there's any X variables that are highly correlated, only use one. I'm gonna hit back to code. Here, I'm going to run a proc freak on the actual variable survive just because I want to see the spread of my data set, right? So it looks like 61% of my data set roughly did not survive the Titanic and 38% did. And if you know anything about the Titanic, that seems correct to me. And now since we've explored and kind of look at our data, we can run our proc logistic, okay? So proc logistic, the name of the data set, the name of the categorical variables that you are interested in. And if you do not know the difference between categorical and numeric variables, there's also a video for that. And then in the model statement, we have our Y on the left-hand side, which is the variable survived. And you tell them that the event is equal to one. And then we have age, embarked, and sex, because those are the only three X predictors that I'm interested in. You can choose different X predictors, of course. I'm going to run that code. 
and I get out exactly what we saw in the printout for our PowerPoint, okay? All right, so that is how you can upload some of that data and run a proc logistic procedure. Thank you all for tuning in. I'm going to link the data set in the description below. It's going to be through Kaggle. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will talk to you all soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.